Hi, everybody. I'm Brett Amron. And I'm Jeff Bast, and this is The Practice Podcast. Today, we have a very special guest, Ms. Alejandra Iglesia. Hi, Alejandra. Alejandra you want to hey, introduce Brett. yourself to the folks yeah. out there? Thank you guys so much for having me on the podcast. I am Alejandra Iglesia. I am a young associate at Bast Amron um, and a 2018 law graduate. 2018 law graduate. When did you start at Bath Amron? I started in November, so it's been 10 months. Mm. 10 months. 10 months. So tell us what it was like ten when you started. Interesting months. Yeah, bro. Interesting months. Yeah. So November to March. Let's let's talk about November to the end of February, right? Yes. The golden uh, era. The golden era of <laughs> yesteryear. Yes. Um, Tell us sort of a little bit about your transition onboarding um, and what you were looking for and why you joined Bast Amron and what you were kind of getting during that period of time. Yeah. So, you know, when I started at Bast Amron, I had been at a point in my young law career where I, I was looking for a firm where I could have more mentorship opportunities and to be surrounded by other attorneys that had a wealth of knowledge and information about the law and just a place where I could grow as a young associate. Um, and being at Bass Amron gave me that right away. So when I started, I was in the office, obviously Monday through Friday, all of my colleagues were present as well. Um, my office was sandwiched between two senior associates. So I got a lot of soundboarding that I was able to do. Um, and that was wonderful. I, we had plenty of opportunity to talk all the time. Um, which was good. And, you know, when you're starting as a young associate, you're also really curious about the law and you want to be the best attorney you can be. But also starting a new firm, you know, you're trying to build relationships with the people around you and you're trying to build relationships with the partners, with the other associates. And that's super important as well. Um, and it was, it was going, I mean, it's still going really well, but it was going really well, I think. And I know for me, when I was a young lawyer, um, I always, it wasn't even necessarily uh, directly being in meetings or popping in and out of offices, it was all, sometimes it was just standing. Uh, if I'm having a conversation or if I'm doing something out in the hall or in the kitchen or in a conference room and I he overhear conversations, sometimes that's a good way to learn as well. Um, and so, you know, I, I always like that camaraderie and being in the office um, and Definitely. getting that as a young lawyer, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I do a lot of that. Um, I'll pop into people's offices. I'll kind of just hang around by the paralegal area and listen to what's going on. Um, and that's very much how I learn as well, just kind of immersing myself in it, being as surrounded by it as I can be. Um, and that's definitely something that I'm super happy about, uh, Bast Amron, and, and it was able to provide me. It still is, but obviously things have changed. So, uh, yeah, obviously COVID, uh, COVID changed that. How, um, how has that adjustment been? Yeah, so um, in March, I moved into a new apartment, like right in the early of March, March 2nd, and COVID hit just two weeks later, and we started working from home. So what are we now, mid-September? So for about five months, I was working from home every day, and I would say that that transition was a lot more difficult than probably I even myself originally let on or other young associates are, are discussing because you want to um, just make it and you just want to push through and not let outside changes in the environment affect you or affect your work product. You always want to push through. But it was a challenge. You know, I went from being able to walk over to your office, Jeff, which I did a hundred times a day, or your office, Brad, or, or just any of my I didn't know any of my friends at work just to talk about something and just being alone literally 24 seven with no distinction between my office or my house. And it was, I, I would say, you know, emotionally challenging. It was, it, um, it challenged my patience with myself. Um, and you become isolated and it just becomes hard to, um, sometimes stay motivated. It becomes hard to feel heard, I guess. So it was something that was very abrupt and surprisingly challenging, I would say. So yeah. tell us some things that have helped you um, sort of move past some of those challenges, if you have, and what challenges, you know, you may still be sort of encountering. 
Yeah. So I think the, one of the, one of the thing one of the great things that I think you guys both did, um, it's not just because I'm on your podcast, but one of the great things that I think you guys did is you started opening up the door to FaceTiming when we did communicate. And that was super helpful for me. So I started FaceTiming with my coworkers when I needed to talk about a case or I needed to just talk. Um, and that made me feel, started making me feel a lot better. Um, of course, in the beginning, it's a little bit awkward also when you're new to the firm, you know, I don't have super close relationships at that point. So it seems weird to go from that to FaceTiming at home. Um, but that was super helpful. And, you know, just expressing, getting comfortable expressing that maybe I'm not doing the best that I could be doing in this situation. And maybe I need a little bit more support, I think was helpful for me. Um, and just recently, you know, things have changed in, in, the, in the landscape recently, but I've started going back into the office um, and that's been really helpful for me. Um, and obviously everything's safe there and I don't feel in harm's way or anything like that. Yeah, uh, I think, you know, you raise a great point about though, the, the mentorship and, and obviously the, you know, the isolation and the emotional toll of, of working from home is, um, is a struggle that I think everyone's really had a hard time with and maybe some people less or more consciously than others um but now the transition back is it has has helped a lot of people i think you know even if you felt like yeah i personally i like working from home but i found that going back to the office a couple of days a week has really been helpful for me it's also good just to kind of just see other people in in person even if it's from a distance um but as for young lawyers, I think that's, this is something that's been lost and young lawyers, the importance of, you know, mentorship and guidance. And, and like Brett said, it's really, you know, if you're working on a case with me, you and I are going to talk about the case, whether we're in the office or not, but it's, it's the cases that you're not working on that you're not hearing about anymore because you're not in the office. You're not, you know, you're not, you know, you know, you're not hearing people in the, in the lunchroom or whatever talking about it. Exactly. And you also, I think as a young lawyer, what probably a lot of other young lawyers are feeling is pressure because you hear so much about people that are at home working from home and they have kids and they have childcare issues and you're trying to be a mom and, you know, a teacher and a, a, a lawyer or whatever they do for a living at the same time. And I don't have any of those um, distractions or any of those other responsibilities, but so you feel like this pressure to to be okay because there's nothing going on, but it's the nothing going on that's challenging. You know, it's the fact right. that it's just nothing. <laughs> it's just right. well, you it's and all, your it's laptop. Also, I think for some people, there's this new layer of almost guilt. Like you feel guilty for not having these other additional struggles. I mean, I feel for the people who have kids because I know what that's like although I don't know what it's like having them at home. I have kids, my kids are home, but they're, you know, teenagers, they're self-sufficient. They don't need me at all. So, um, yeah, I think that's an additional struggle because you see your colleagues, your colleagues struggle and you want to help. And yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah I, I mean, I think there's that too, but I also think that everybody, you know, as Alejandra mentioned, I mean, being alone, being isolated, I mean, those are challenges. Um, everyone's got different challenges, different layers yeah. of it. Um, and to push through and, you know, is, is hard. And I think having connections help, uh, exactly. helps people. Um, mm -hmm. What other outlets, um, you know, for you, have you sort of um, started using in order, you know, obviously connections with FaceTime and, and work related, but anything else that you're doing that, that has, has been helpful to you uh, during this yeah. time? Yeah. So I think, um, again, like from the young lawyer perspective, also I've been practicing for just a couple of years, figuring out a routine and structure for the way that I practice is still relatively new. Right. So like, I don't have my Alejandra way of practicing really yet. That's a very touch and go situation still at this point. So in establishing structure, establishing a little bit of routine, um, that's helped me a lot as quarantine has gone on. I think in the beginning, it was hard because we all thought it was going to not last. So we just were moving on a temporary basis. But as it became more solid and as it became more permanent, you know, at some point you hit, you, you know, you have this light bulb go off and you're like, okay, 
I, I need to find a permanent way to structure and routine my life if this is how it's going to be. And adding that structure, I think, was integral because for the first few months, it's super, for me at least, and I'm sure for a lot of other young attorneys, it's super messy because you're still figuring out how you practice and what works for you. And now, you know, you, you're at home and, and completely alone and you're just trying to, you almost feel like you're on your own. You're figuring this out on your own. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. So when you have some structure, um, for me, it was going back into the office. It was something as simple as sitting at my dining room table instead of my sofa. I mean, it was little shifts over time, but establishing structure was a big, big thing for me. Right. Yeah. I put myself on a schedule. Like I would say, I want to be at, at work by 9, 9 a.m. And so sometimes I'd be running to get to my desk to, by 9 a.m. You know, my coffee is still being made, but I'm at my desk by 9 a.m. Um, just to put myself on that, you know, on a schedule the same, yeah. the same way. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, I went, you know, uh, obviously everyone knows I get up early in the morning, but um, normal pre COVID. Um, but I made a, you know, commitment to myself that I was still going to get up early and have that and get to the office. Like Jeff said, and Alejandro, you said, have a routine and get to the office, whether I was actually going to the office or not, because it's important. It's important to have that um for those of us with kids at home sometimes if they're in school and they have a break at lunch maybe you can go down and you know step away and, and eat with them um periodically here and there you know and, and and maybe after school spend a few minutes with them or or you know and yeah. get back to it but a routine is super important and i know you know uh we've seen some people who struggled with that early and like you said alejandra I, I agree i everyone thought right we all sort of went our separate ways, we scattered, we went to our homes and we thought, okay, we're going to hunker down for a brief period. Uh, and then, and then we're going to be, yeah. And then we'll be back. Right. It'll be quick. Um, and here we are, you know, six months later, uh, yeah. and we're still in this with like no end in sight. And I think that to me anyway, is, is a struggle as well, because if you told me on this date, we're done, even if it's six months from now, I could program my mind and say, okay, yeah. over the next six months, I'm going to do this and then it's going to be over. But, you know, there's no end, we right? Are, I mean, yeah. we, we are accustomed to patterns mm -hmm. and schedules, like for yeah. our whole life, you know, think about it. we start school at a certain time of year, we end it at a certain time of year, we graduate each year as lawyers, we have an end of the year evaluation and you're a first year and then you're a second year. And so we have these patterns in our life and then you know, the rug got yanked out from under us. Yeah. But yeah, I think, Alejandro, you, you raised a good point about, you know, it's a FaceTime thing. And that's yeah. such a minor thing. But I have, I have personally found that just FaceTiming someone, it's just so much more, um, there's so much more of a connection than just calling somebody over the phone. Yeah. And way more than just sending them an email. And so especially internally, before I send an email internally, unless it's 11 o'clock at night, I'm going to call somebody or, you know, FaceTime them. Any other tips that you would give for partners at firms that have, you know, young lawyers that are yes. struggling through this? Yes. I think that one of the things that you guys did really well is you talked about it. You opened the door to make someone like me, which I am the youngest and the newest associate at Bass Amron, um, feel comfortable saying I'm having a hard time. And, you know, that's a tough thing to say. It's tough to admit to your bosses, the people that are evaluating your performance, that, are, that you're trying to impress, especially when you're new, especially when you're young. And knowing that that door is open for me to say, this has been hard for me, or I need more help on this front was huge because I felt um, comfortable and I felt open to express that to you guys. And I don't know that that's going on everywhere else. I don't know that the, the friends that I graduated with are having the same experiences at their firm. So I think mm -hmm. if, you know, one thing that I can say is, you know, if you're a partner, or if you're, you're an owner of a firm somewhere, you know, just be open, ask, reach out, shoot a text, you know, are you, how are you doing? Um, how do you feel? How has this been for you? Like just, it doesn't have to be heavy, but just a casual conversation to let me know that you actually care. That's great advice. That's we great advice. And it's hard for, it's hard for all of us. Right. Um, because we're just not, you can't, like you said, walk down the hall and just pop in and say, how are you today? Or see it on somebody's face. Um, and so yeah. Yeah, the connection is good and the FaceTiming and zoom is, is, is great technology to have during this time. So use it. Right. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think especially for young attorneys, like we're, we don't want to show you if we're struggling. We don't want to show you that we're having a hard time. We don't want to show you we had a bad day. Like our, at least for me, I don't want to speak for all young attorneys. We just want to be 100% good, doing awesome all the time. Um, it's tough. It's tough to have that vulnerability. But when you guys opened up the door, I think it just made me feel a little bit more comfortable to express that to you. You know, this has been hard or it's lonely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's been hard for all of us, but uh, yeah. we're going to get through this together. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, we are with open communication, right? Exactly. Yeah. Well, That's thank you, thing. Alejandro. You're doing a great job. And uh, we appreciate you being a guest on the Practice Podcast today. Thank you guys so much for having me. And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your weekend. You too. You too. Thanks so much.